Hello chaps and chapesses, and this week we're going to talk about my top 10 accessories and tools for use on the river. This summer, as a little bit of product of what's been going on around us, I've spent a lot more time on our home rivers, on the Test and the Itchin and the Avon this year, and I've spent a lot of time guiding, and I had to slightly redefine my kit for this year. Uh, I hadn't updated it in a while, I've just been, like most of us, just sort of trudging on with the stuff I've been using for a long, long time. And so this year I thought I would look around and see what was out there, what pieces of kit would make my life a little bit easier, and I got hold of them. While I was on the river the other day, one of the guys I was guiding turned around and said, okay, so look, what are the best bits and pieces that you've gathered this season? So I thought I would make a quick video of it and show you some of the accoutrements and some of the tools and accessories that I have found particularly useful through this season. Some of you will have seen the video I made a little while ago about the fish pond switchback system. That was the first thing that I got hold of. And I have to say, this thing has pretty much changed my life on the river. It's so much more comfortable than wearing a vest, and it's a lot more useful than my previous hip pack, um, mostly because of the fact that it slides around your waist. So when you're wearing it, you can pull it to the front, you can do what you need to do, pull out the fly boxes, change your flies, etc., very quickly, and then whiz it back again, uh, and it just doesn't get in the way, which is really, really handy. The other thing I particularly like is this little strap that basically runs down your shoulder. It's like a little workstation. On this little workstation, I've got a very, very useful fly fob, ripple foam fly fob. Then I've got my uh, Dr. Slick's forceps, which I would never leave home without. Uh, that certainly makes life considerably easier when you are trying to unhook a fish. There's nothing worse than if you want to release a fish, to be fumbling around trying to get a hook out of it and just taking time. A pair of forceps, do the job properly, do it right first time, get the fish back in the water. The other thing I have is one of these little fish pond zingers with uh, another little Dr. Slick snippers on the end. Um, I like these ones because they're very fine pointed and uh, they're particularly useful for when you're trying to nip material off very, very small dry flies, uh, size 18s, etc., which, which these days I slightly struggle to see. So um, every piece of little bit of help that I can get, I find that particularly handy. So the fish pond switchback belt system has been really, really useful. Um, I have done a little review video for it. If you click here, then you can see that. So what have I got in it? Well, the first thing I want to look at is the tacky catch-all fly box. So they do two different boxes for dry flies. And when you're fishing with mayflies and some of the bigger ones, you need something which is not going to squish the hackles. So they make the dry fly box, which has got a clear side on one side, and then they make this catch-all box. This is like a two-sided tacky dry fly box. It has 3D silicon inserts, which are perfect for dry flies. In all, you can get 398 flies in it, and it's an ideal box for a combination of dry fly and nymphs, or in my case, I use it for big and small dry flies. It measures 7 inches by 3.75 inches by 1 inch. It's got that classic magnetic closure and is a perfect complement to my other tacky boxes. This one really has been fantastic this season. I particularly like the way I can put all of my dry flies into this 3D silicon and the hackles don't get squished, they sit underneath and it's more than big enough in the base layer to take the big Mohican mayflies that I like on the chalk streams. But simultaneously, the silicon slits will take very, very small dry flies as well. So all in all, this is a great all-round box, whether you're going to use it for nothing but dry flies or whether you're going to use it for a combination of dry flies and nymphs. Cost-wise, this one comes in at $34.99. It's maybe not the cheapest a box on the market, but it certainly is, in my opinion, probably one of the best. So I'm sure you're like me and you like to have things organized. I like to have all the various bits and pieces that I need where I can get at them very quickly, then I can do what I need to do, and then I can get back to being on the water or looking after the client I'm guiding. So to that end, one of the things I find particularly useful is to have things like my floatant and the various other bits and pieces that I use for drying flies, for uh, putting substances on flies which are going to make them float. I like those to hand. So when I flip the switch back around, I now have right here 
hanging off this area, which is this, which is the fish pond floatant holder. And that just clips on there. And that has it right there where I need it. And then also this Loon Amadou pouch. So the fish pond floatant bottle holder comes in at £9.99. How many times have you lost your floatant or you're grubbing around in the bottom of your bag trying to find it? And this little gadget just keeps it right to hand. And it can, can be clipped wherever you need it and it's immensely convenient. When you've caught a fish with a dry fly or you have totally saturated it, you have to then redress it. Now, what a lot of people do is they'll take their very, very wet fly and then they'll shove it in their canister of dry floatant or something like that and it comes out all sticky a bit like a sort of you know when you throw antiperspirant onto your armpits and it gets all sticky and tacky and it looks horrible and it doesn't float properly so amadou is almost nature's way of providing an anhydrous substance which then will absorb the water off your fly now that's really handy so I've used Amadou for a very long time. Originally, my father had some, which was the original Amadou fungus, which is where it comes from. Now, modern day versions are a little bit more pliable because that stuff was rock solid until you had water on it. But this, this one from Loon is so soft and you just put your fly in there, give it a really good squish, takes an enormous amount of the moisture out of the fly straight away, and then you can redress it. The Amadou actually comes from a mushroom, Fomes fermenterus, and this one particular one comes with a steel tether cable that allows you to securely fasten it to your pack or your vest or however you want to carry it. This is a very quick and easy way of getting your flies back on the water and floating properly. The Loon Amadou patch is a bit more expensive, coming in at $29.99, but it's a bit like blotting paper for flies. So on the other side of my pack, I have a fish pond pyopod micro trash container that's a really good name i'm glad i don't have to say that incredibly quickly because otherwise i'd make a fool of myself however it's a really good piece of kit all of us fly fishermen need to be exceptionally responsible about leaving bits of leader and micro trash all over the banks there's nothing that irritates me more than turning up on a bank or a beat where i'm guiding or i'm fishing to find bits of leader material around a bench or cigarette butts or those kind of things take them away with you and this little gadget makes that incredibly easy this little pod basically clips on the side it's got a silicon rubber top and all you have to do is when you finish twirling around with your leaders and your bits of leader material roll it up in a little ball and just shove it in there and then it's going to stay in there and you can sort it out when you get home now Obviously, when you get home, pull it out, chop it up into tiny pieces and throw it away safely. But the other thing it's really good for is if I see other people's cigarette butts, I pick them up and I shove them in here so that actually I'm cleaning up around where the areas I'm fishing. Now, I think if we all do our little bit and clean the areas that we're fishing in, it'll be a much better experience for all of us. They're $12.99. They come in a number of different colors. I actually have them dotted around all over the place. So I have one on my pack and then I have another one in the back of my car. I've got another one in another pack that I use for another kind of fishing and I just find them really useful. The next one I want to talk about is a water bottle holder. Now I know I tend to harp on about hydration and the fact that you need to stay hydrated. It's part of, I suppose, spending so much time on the salt flats, but that's just as important when you're on a riverbank. Quite often we get, we get so excited and clued in to actually hunting fish on the river and the visual aspect of chalk stream fishing or river fishing that actually we completely forget to drink water. We might have something else at lunchtime, but actually it's very important to drink water through the day. So on my belt, I have a fish pond water bottle holder. Now what I love about this, are you gonna go, oh, it's another fish pond product. Yes, it is another fish pond product. Why? Because they're good. They're really well designed and you can beat the hell out of them and they stand the test of what I have to put them through. So yes, that's why I like to use fish pond. Now back to what I was talking about. This water bottle holder is a molded water bottle holder. So what does that mean? It means it stays in its shape, which means that it hugs your bottle and it doesn't fall out, which I've always found incredibly irritating. It's also got a couple of different straps on it, which you can lock the bottle in. And it also has a number of different attachment abilities on the back. So you can put it on any different size belt or pack that you want to. It does actually have a couple of points that you can hang tools off as well, but I tend to not use those just because I 
I want to keep those on my pack rather than my water bottle. But stay hydrated, it's really important. To go in my water bottle holder, I obviously needed a water bottle. Pretty obvious. But I wanted one that would actually keep things cool. So I wanted a sort of thermosy style. So what I found on Amazon, which I will leave a link in the description below, is this 720 degree bottle, which is part thermos. It's got two different tops on it. One of which is a speed drink top, which means you don't lose the lid, which is very useful when you're on the riverbank. And this is the 410 milliliter size, which fits perfectly in the fish pond water bottle holder. This was a great piece of kit, really pleased I bought it. It's, uh, it's been very handy on the riverbank. The next thing in my pack is the Rio Euro Nymph Leader. I've been wanting to get into Euro Nymphing for quite a long time. Most of the time I haven't really done it because I fish on the chalk streams, but as we move into the autumn time, I'm certainly gonna spend a lot more time doing it. And I was talking to Alex about how to rig up a Euro Nymph Leader and he told me all sorts of very complicated dimensions and various bits of things that I had to put into it, which seemed far too much like hard work to me. So I saw this and I thought this is absolutely perfect. So the Rio Euro Nymph Leader costs £9.99. To me, that seems like an absolute bargain, saves me having to do a load of knot tying and various other accoutrements, which I don't really want to do. These 11 foot leaders are built out of high vis milky white tapered leader and hand tied with 22 inches of indicator tippet material. The leader ends with a tippet ring and that allows you to attach your own tippet so when you are going to put on your four or five feet of tippet material it's the ideal scenario and it just saves you having to mess around using various indicator colored leader materials and tying them together. Yes, this is just me basically being incredibly lazy and throwing money at the problem when I probably could have done it myself. But you know what? Sometimes I just like doing that. <laughs> it makes life so simple. So this one is 15 pounds down to 8.5 pounds and it also comes in pink and yellow, which is what I went for. I thought maybe I'd see it better. To me, this just seems like a simple solution. The next thing I want to talk about is my net. Hmm, ripe. This is the fish pond mid-length nomad net made of a combination of carbon fiber and fiberglass. This has been an absolute game changer for me. As soon as I saw that these were coming into the UK, I bought one of the first ones that came in and I have been using it ever since. I love the fact that I can just slip it down my back. It's out of the way and I love this rubber mesh. This rubber mesh is very kind to fish. I found it particularly useful when, when I'm catch and releasing. I don't like killing fish that much. And this is one of those nets which you can firstly be gentle to the fish, it doesn't take the slime off them, but secondly it's particularly useful for reviving fish because you can hold the fish in the current with this. So the fish pond nomad mid-length net is not cheap. It's 189 pounds and 99 of your earth pence. Now I know that's not cheap, but to me it is probably one of the best nets on the market. They make them in various lengths. The mid length works very well for me. It's perfect for if you're gonna fish off the bank, but at the same time, it's not too long that it gets in the way, but it's long enough to reach over the rushes or into the sedge and retrieve a fish from that. And it's very, very light. It's very strong. It floats, which is very handy. It's actually got a useful inches scale on the handle as well, which allows you to quickly take a quick gauge of how big the fish is. But to me, this has been absolutely fantastic. You can also swap things with it. The other bits and pieces I carry around in my pack, which are absolutely essential, are some kind of mud or fuller's earth. This one I've had since I think I was about 16 years old. It's lasted a very long time and it still does the job perfectly well. And some shake powder, a little bit of shake and vac to put the freshness back into your flies. That is very, very useful after the fly has been totally saturated. It's part of my manicuring and pedicure process for all flies as they have been saturated or squashed or eaten by a fish. So that helps me put the fly back on the water. So aside from various other fly boxes, um, I'm using the other tacky boxes at the moment, which I have also done a quick video on, on the new ones which have come out, which have been great. I don't really carry that much more with me. I like to try and keep it light. There's no point in carrying a large amount of stuff that you don't need. And that really is about it. I don't really carry anything else. Well, as always, I hope you found this video of use. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.